Hi and welcome to another demo. Today I'm going to be showing you how I paint this um, line and wash. I've done the line wa work um, off camera because it takes quite a while. Um, for me, doing a line and wash, um, the focus is all on the line work um, done with waterproof fine liners in this case from my photograph from a visit last week to my favourite place on the south coast of England, Cookmere Haven, with the Coast Guard cottages and the seawall at high tide, just with the sea lapping around the seawall. Um, so the first thing I did was sketched it out lightly in pencil, making sure everything was in the right position. And then that um, made my job of doing the important line work much easier because the sketch was correct. And so all I needed to do was go over that and put in the values, the dark values. Um, and then I can just simply go in and paint and the paint job is very easy, comparatively speaking. Um, for a line and wash, which is one of the reasons I think it's a really good thing for beginners. It can help beginners with their drawing skills. As the more you practice with your drawing skills, the easier it is then to apply those skills to your painting. Even with loose painting, it's really good to have a firm foundation in drawing. Now you can see here, I've used a bit of masking tape across my horizon. That's so that I don't have to worry about uh, my sky um, bleeding into my sea. So I want to paint my sky first. So I'm wetting um, parts of the sky. I just want a similar sky to the one in the photograph today. I'm going to use cobalt blue and a synthetic mop brush. It's um, an Escoda Ultimo size 14. This is cobalt blue and I'm just washing it into the sky, um, working around the wet areas, keeping some dry unpainted areas so I get a lovely range of soft and hard edges or lost and found edges in my sky, which will help to give it that sort of realistic look of the uh, clouds blowing in um, from the west across the English Channel. I'm using Milford cotton paper today. It's cold pressed, 11 inches by 15 inches or about 28 centimetres by 38 centimetres. It's taped to my board with ordinary decorator's masking tape and my board is at my usual angle of about 45 degrees which helps um, the paint to flow down the page um, so I'm getting that lovely interaction between water, paint and gravity making sure that I cut around my cottages so that I can keep them white so that they show up beautifully. The cottages and the seawall is my focal point um, because that's where most of the detail in is. So what I'm doing with my paint is using mid-tones to work around those dark tones and the light tones of unpainted paper in order to build up my tonal values with paint and to really work hard on drawing the eye to the cottages and the sea wall. So I've peeled off my masking tape and it's pulled off a little bit of my line work. Um, occasionally that happens, but it's not too much of a problem because I can just go in with a fine liner and um, just carefully and quickly replace it. And that looks fine now. So continuing quickly, um, just before leaving it all to dry, with some watery raw sienna, which has got a tiny bit of the cobalt blue in it to grey it down a little bit. And I'm just going to put some sand areas in and a bit of tone into those um, that big pile of rocks that's piled up against the seawall as extra reinforcement against the coastal erosion, which is actually quite severe here. This is my Pro Art Large Ron Ranson Harky brush. So I'm using the tips and just sweeping in and dabbing in um, plenty of this lovely sort of greyish sandy colour um, to bring harmony across the whole of the beach area. 
with this undercoat and then I can put in some darker tones dropping it into the wet paint um, which is burnt umber and this will just give me a little bit more tone tonal variation in this undercoat and while I've got the burnt umber on my brush I'll put a little bit into the um, the wooden part of the seawall and the wooden fence that runs along just below the cottages. Just dropping it in really simply. I think the thing to remember with a line and wash is keep your washes simple. Um, anything you do should just be there to enhance the line work um, rather than being too complex. And so that the line work, as I say, is a thing that carries the painting. I now need to make sure it's completely dry and then once it is then I'm going to mix up a slightly um, greener cobalt blue by adding a bit of raw sienna into it um, and using my flat brush it's a three quarter inch synthetic um, Cotman one stroke flat brush and carefully drawing it in a horizontal line across the horizon line. I'm not sure if that's quite the right colour. Um, the area here is, um, is based on a lot of flint and chalk. There's a lot of chalk that falls from the cliffs a little bit further along towards the east and this falls into the water and gives the water a really sort of interesting greenish colour sometimes and I don't think I've got it quite right but if I haven't, once it dries, I can glaze it with a slightly yellower colour. But for now, I just want to get in um, the sea and then I want to get in the grass below the cottage, below the fence, and then put a bit of green into the bushes where there is some small unpainted areas um, of less tone and that just gives me that simple green outline of the bushes and the grass. I can put a bit of um, that same sort of tone across the shingle to just bring some harmony across it and to sort of represent the, um, some of the seaweed that's brought up onto the beach. Now this is my burnt sienna with my small calligraphy brush, just a little bit of paint onto the roofs of the houses because they're tiled roofs and the chimneys. Um, this sort of part really is just colouring in the line work um, and just keeping most of it as plain as possible and then building up with indigo and Payne's grey a little bit of shadow and this helps the boulders and the seawall to stand out even more by bringing in and just building up the tone that I already had from my fine liner work and just reinforcing that now with a bit of paint. And I hope you can see that just about everything that I'm doing with the paint is, as I said at the beginning, um, all designed to try and lead the viewer's eye to the cottages and then up to the sky and around the painting. Um, this is stronger raw sienna. I'm just swept across these sort of front um, sandy areas that drop down then to the beach. And um, that just brightens them up a bit, lifts them, brings them forward and pushes the rest of the painting back a bit further into the distance, but also leads, <coughs> excuse me, leads the eye to the cottages. And that's um, just about all the painting done. Just a few more darks to be dropped in here and there um, with my small calligraphy brush into the boulders and then with my flat brush um, getting some darks in at the, the high tide line where there's some seaweed. So putting in just a little bit of shadow and some suggestions of some of that. And I've been looking at my sea now that it's dry and I don't think it's dark enough. So I'm going to mix a mixture with a lot more raw sienna into my cobalt blue and 
I'm going to glaze over the C. Uh, when you do a glaze, it's important that the underpainting is completely dry. If it's not dry, or if you scrub away too much with your glaze, then you in you're in danger of lifting or disturbing the paint underneath. So all I'm going to do is use my flat brush and um, this um, green, greenish blue colour that gives me that look of the chalk beneath the water um, and pulling it across my sea. So I'm keeping things as simple as possible. I'm not going to go over and over and over. I'm going to pull out a few sort of um, lighter lines, um, feather in a few darker lines, but that's going to be about it. And I think I'm just about finished. So here it is, I've removed the tape and you can see it against a white border and it gives me a, a chance to look at it with fresh eyes and see if I need to do anything more to it. And I think there's a few bits that I need to do. I think my grass underneath the cottages is looking a bit flat. So I'm going to glaze that with some cad yellow. Again, just pulling that across and I shall put it into the, the bushes and the grass below the fence as well. And while this is a very small detail, I think it just brings a lot more light and freshness and draws the eye again to those lovely warm tones of the sunlight hitting the grass. And I think I'll just put in a few more darks into the pile of boulders um, using the darks to accentuate the lighter boulders and then the tips of the flat brush with that same dark colour which is indigo and Payne's grey um, just to increase the shadow below the seawall in the distance and I think that's the last detail I think I'm finished now so I hope that was helpful, especially if you're a beginner and it will encourage you to um, have a go at sort of drawing out scenes like this, maybe from your own um, photographs um, and you can then sort of sketch them out and then go over them with waterproof fine liners and then using this approach, um, paint it as simply and as freshly as you can. It takes a little bit of getting used to, like everything, it takes a while to learn and practice, but it's well worth um, persevering with this sort of thing because it can be really satisfying to be able to paint places from your um, surroundings and from your photographs so that you're, you're capturing some lovely memories with your paintings. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please don't forget to click on the thumbs up and give us a like because that really helps with my reach and leave a comment. Um, I always read the comments even if I can't uh, reply to all of them and I love reading all your comments. Um, they're fantastic. And um, thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.